everybody. Welcome to the water cooler session today. My name's Dr. Larry Green. As you know, I'm very excited to be doing this with you guys and starting up on this series again after a little hiatus for, for the summer. And we're going to talk about something I think that is essential and today and very important in being a physician, something I think physicians really don't do. We're not bred to do, and that's networking. And I'm going to talk about the importance of networking today in, in terms of all facets of our life. And I think why it's important in all facets of what, I, what we do. I don't think I would be doing this and talking to you today if I hadn't networked and I hadn't done what I've accomplished over the many years I've been in practice. So it definitely takes time, but it also takes networking. Um, I don't think, like I mentioned, we physicians really know about the importance of networking. And when I was younger, I certainly didn't know about it. I, didn't, I'm, I think I'm a, I'm a late bloomer in terms of networking. I think those, the earlier you start, the better off you are, even in school. Um, that's something I didn't do. And I, I think I didn't advance as much and didn't do as many things as I could have done when I was in uh, college or medical school uh, because I didn't really know about networking or didn't listen to others who talked about it and, or didn't care to do it either way, not mature enough to do it. But I think uh, part of the maturity factor, at least for me, was learning about the importance of networking. And uh, it's not something that comes natural to a physician. If you're, if you're um, in, in business school, uh, if you're in business, uh, you, they know, everyone knows networking is essential. You, you, have to do that to get ahead because that's not something we have to do. Um, we doctors, you know, we, we get ahead, and especially dermatologists, uh, we, get, we get ahead by doing well on exams. That's how we got ahead in school and being in, in, the, in the front of our class and maybe participating in after school activities or, or, or extracurricular activities, I should say. That helps, but really it's all about grades and maybe interviewing well, doing well on in interviews. But that's not networking. And in the real world, in the outside of the medical world, there is no grades, there is no exams that they can get us ahead or interviews. It's all about who you know and where, what you do and where you go with it. But that does help us in medicine. Uh, and it can help us younger in medicines. But we're not bred to network. We don't have to network in school to advance. But think about it. Uh, for those who do network in school or in, in residency, medical school or residency, we'll start there. It can help to advance. You know, if you get to know your attendings um, other than, than getting labs for them as, a, as an intern or seeing how you can help them as a, as a resident or intern, get to know them on a personal level. Uh, get to know... I'm not saying be friends with them because they're, they're your teachers, but, but still get to know them, get to talk with them a bit. Get to know what they do, what their interests are. Get to know the staff when you're uh, in, in, in an intern or a resident. What do the staff do? What are their interests? Don't just think of them as staff. They're people and they have lives and, and their lives can intersect with ours and also help us in, in ways you never know. I, I think that's the, when you think about it, the most important take home on networking, and we'll come back to this, is really putting yourself out there to get to know everyone because you never know when that could come back to give you an advantage or to help you in the future. What you don't know, you don't know, and you don't go anywhere. But putting yourself out there and meeting and talking with people and being social, and that's what networking really is, you never know where it can lead. I've heard multiple stories of friends who have, you know, met people and talked with people who four or five years later will come back and, 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 and offer them something, a job or help them in some capacity. It doesn't happen so often in, med in medicine, but it certainly can. And, and especially as we get older and we get into our jobs and we'll talk about that. Let's go back to school though. Our residency, when you think about it, is our internship is chosen for us. We're matched. We have the match selection process. So we put our choices, we interview for that, and we put our choices and they rank us, we rank them and we're chosen. There's no networking involved. 
But what if you want to do a fellowship? What if it's beyond the match? It's all about who you know and, and what you're doing. So I would say, I would suggest for those of you who are younger listening to this and are not, not in jobs yet as physicians, but are still in school and training, is to start right away and get to know everybody. Talk with everybody. Share your cards, share your ideas. Get to know them, whether it be your faculty, your residency program director, or even your chairman. Get to know them and what, what they like to do in their interests. And that's how you start networking. And then if you have a question, they can always refer, refer you to someone else if they're not the right person. But to have that network of networking when, when you're young, I think is very important to get you further. Because it's, it's completely different once we're in the job world. Like I said, completely different. So we always want a network. And, and although we don't do it when we're young. So I mentioned that, you know, this podcast, which, by the way, I forgot to thank Equal Marketing for. Um, they are the leaders in digital marketing for dermatologists, and they're, they're sponsoring the water cooler. But Equal wouldn't have come to me if I hadn't have networked. And that's something that, and, and I very much enjoy working with the people at Equa Marketing, and I've gotten to know them, and that's a new networking avenue, getting to know the people at, at Equa Marketing, who's doing the podcast here for me and sponsoring all this. So that, that's a new network. You always open new networks when you start, so, but I, I'm digressing. So let's go back to school and talk about networking outside of our match. So when you're, when you're just starting residency, that's when we've already matched. I think, you know, we haven't had to network and it would have been good, like I mentioned, to network before earlier in your life uh, in school, but you never know, when, to let, to, you know when it's going to help you, like I mentioned. But when we're residents, when we're start, we've, we started our training, that's when we're really so important to network because we have to network for jobs and in the future, we have to think about that. So who are you gonna meet? Who are you gonna meet outside of your, your school? Who are you gonna meet outside of your residency training program? Other dermatologists, even non-dermatologists, sometimes even patients uh, who know things and know people. Always put yourself out there, that's my suggestion. Always talk to people. Talk to your patients as a resident. And we'll come to this, back to this later on when, when I, I talk about networking as, as board certified dermatologists when you're, you're in your practice and working. But it's important, I think, to start as a resident. There's a lot to do as a resident. You have to learn. You have testing. You have to fulfill requirements. But always keep in the back of the mind networking. You know, you're set for residency. You're set right now for the next three years for four years if you're an intern first, and then for a fellowship afterwards for another year or so if you're doing a fellowship, and that's not necessarily networking to get there. But at one point, you'll be on your own, even if you end up being an employee for somebody. And that's where it's really essential to network and get to know people because, uh, and I'll keep coming back to this, it's all about who you know and putting yourself out there to know those people. I didn't network much as a resident. I didn't network, like I told you, I was a late bloomer, uh, much in medical, I didn't network at all in medical school. I didn't understand that. I was very pedantic and thinking about the tests and doing well on the exam to get my, my standing in class elevated and doing well on the, 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 the step one and step two and eventually step three tests so that you can get a better position for residency because it's all about the exams. And when you're a dermatology resident, it's still all about the exams. You have the, the mock boards and, the, and you have the real boards. And it's all about how you do and how you perform. So we're, we're very differently trained. And, and, and I shouldn't say trained. We, we're, we're very differently. Uh, the way we are set up as, as doctors, as dermatologists, is very different way of thinking than the rest of the world, I think. We're about performance. Networking has nothing to do with performance about who you know and how you put yourself out there and who you meet 
and who remembers you and who you remember. So it, it's different from school. And so that's, again, I'm going back and I want to suggest uh, again that those of you who are younger and listening to this, start as soon as you can. It's not the way we think. It's not a priority, but please try and make it a priority as, as much as you can. Okay, so I mentioned I didn't network and I still got, became a dermatologist. That's fine. You don't have to. It's not networking, like I mentioned. It's not essential for schooling and training and all that. You'll still get a job there. You can open up your own shingle, which I eventually did 20 some years ago. And you don't need to network to do that. And, but then when you open up your own shingle, actually you, you have to really start networking among your peers. But that's another story. Say I finished, I got a job with an HMO or Kaiser or a venture capital group, private equity group. What do I need to network for? All my patients are set for me. My job is set, my life is set. And that's true. So say you finish and you, you get, uh, you're straight out, you know, you're straight out of residency, you get a job. Well, what do you need to do? You're, they're paying your, all the dues you need, your membership in societies, you got your vacation, your patients are given, they, they, that's all sent to you. So what do you need to network for? Well, you don't, but let's talk about why you do. Early on in, 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 in your job and in your life, so if I want to be an employee and make my salary and nothing else for the rest of my life, I agree, no networking needed. You have to be, do well, make sure your patients like you, be pleasant, not necessarily get to know your patients, but be pleasant and do good, thorough work as a, as a board-certified dermatologist. And that's great. But, and if that's what you want, you can least, certainly lead your work life that way. To me, though, that's not what I, what I think we should do. That's not what we want. We don't want to stick our head in the sand and see our patients and let the world come to us and we just have to live with it. Because that's basically what you're saying you're going to do. Are you going to be an employee, a good employee, do a good job? But the world will dictate to you what happens. I suggest that's not what you want. We don't want the world to dictate to us what happens. We want to be part of the world. We want to dictate with it. We want to, I'm not saying we're going to be dictating for the world. We're going to be in charge of what's going to happen in the world, but you're at least going to be a part of it, a player in it. You can't be a player in it if your head is in the sand and you let the world come to you. You have to go to the world. And again, that's what networking is all about, going to the world. So yes, networking is limited, like I mentioned, in residency and, and, and internship and schooling, medical school, and even universities before that, college, undergraduate, before that. It's all about performance on exams. And you get that job, you pass your step three, you pass your boards, you're board certified, you get that job with, a, with HMO or private equity group or, or large group practice that's established. You just have to, you can let them, you know, dictate what you do and put your head in the sand and, and do a good job. But that's not what we want. I, again, I suggest we work with the world, not let the world work on us. So how do you do that? That's all about networking. And I think that's where we, we as physicians, if we haven't networked before, and I didn't, until I opened up my own shingle, I let the, certainly let the world dictate what was happening to me. Um, but we, we have no choice at this point. If you want to advance in the world and you want to get ahead, and you want to be part of the world, not necessarily get ahead, but you want to do something different. You don't want to just be someone who works, puts in shift work as a doctor. That's, that's really not why I think we went to medical school. We, we want to do more. And then we, I think it's time for us to catch up to the rest of the world and start networking. Go be out there, be social. So if you, if you start a private practice, I mentioned earlier like I did, Networking is, you're not going to get busy if you're, if you're not networking. Maybe if you're in a very low underserved area. I'm not in Washington, D.C. There's, there's hundreds and hundreds of dermatologists in my area. But if you're a low un, underserved area, okay, the world can still come to you. Patients will, will knock on your doorstep if there's a need for dermatologists. But that may not be forever. So what's the first thing you do when you, when you, when you go out there and you – introduce yourself or you start, you set up your shingle, you want to introduce yourself, you go to your fellow physicians. Those are our first networking and arms 
uh, compadres who we want to network with because they're they're like they're like minded like people they they live lives like us they've been about performance and getting to the places they are as physicians and so we want to network with them we want to go and introduce herself hey I'm Dr. Green, I'm a dermatologist uh, down the street and uh, just opened up my, sh- my office or I just joined a group and it'd be great to have lunch with you or meet you and learn about your patients because I'd like to see, you know, see any patients you have with skin problems or, or, eye, or uh, hair problems or need any skin surgery uh, that's, or need, need cosmetic medical procedures done like botulinum toxin or lasers or wrinkle fillers. We want to talk about what we do. You know, it's amazing. I, I still think it's, as much as I've done this, it's amazing how many physicians still think that, that uh, dermatologists are not surgeons. And that's when they think that everything that's on the face has to be removed by a plastic surgeon. Of course, we as dermatologists, I cringe whenever I hear that because we're very well trained to, to do all that. So I apologize for the, the noise, the, the things going on outside the door. But anyway, um, we we want to show everyone that we do more and that things are we, about ourselves and what we do. And the only way to do that is to network. So we want to introduce ourselves to the community. Well, how else do we do that? There's county medical societies. I'm currently president of uh, my county medical society. So there's a thousand plus, thousands of doctors in my county that are um, that are working not just dermatologists, I mean everything else. So I wanted, I wanted, how did I get to be president? Well, I, you know, I, I got to, I networked. I got to know as many people as I could. I joined the County Medical Society, getting involved, giving back to the community. Networking starts with that as well. So I went to the County Medical Society meetings. I introduced myself to other physicians. I said I wanted to get involved and I got involved uh, with advocacy, which we've talked about in earlier podcasts. That was interest of mine. Find out what your interest is and went on from there. In fact, I'll talk, uh, do another little aside here and talk about how my interest in advocacy and networking really led me down paths. I never even would have imagined to have happened. So back, this goes back 10, 12 years ago, maybe even 13 years ago by now, just a few years after I started working and being, come up, being a member of the County Medical Society and letting them know my interest in advocacy. I was very interested in scope of practice and regulation of medical spas because in, in my state, because everyone who was not a physician or certainly not a qualified physician was doing procedures that I, don't th- I didn't think they should be doing. Everyone wanted to be a dermatologist. So I wanted to make sure that qualified people were treating patients. So I wanted to advocate that. So I, that was the first thing that my medical society knew I was interested in. So I, I, they helped me. They, I, I was able to help create regulations um, from the board of physicians through the board of physicians, which I went to, and it took several years. So that Maryland is one of the best states when it comes to making sure that qualif- qualified physicians um, only do, and, and, and certainly not non-physicians, do medical procedures on, on people here who live in Maryland. It's not the same in many other states. You can be a high school graduate and have no training in other states and give bo- open up a botulinum toxin shop and give people botulinum toxin. So in Maryland, that's not possible. So that's something I started with, with this and uh, with, with my interest in advocacy. And I grew and, I be, and then, and then I, I, I succeeded and the medical society wanted me to become more involved. And I became more involved and they absolutely joined the board. Well, I met everyone on the board. I was on the board for eight or nine years. And uh, eventually I, I was asked to become president, which I am now the county medical society. So all the physicians in the county I live in, in my state, I'm sort of the president for this year. So it's, it's an honor. It's a privilege. And I, I worked my way up to it through networking and, and have, uh, 
I don't know. I'm glad, honored to be doing it. And, and, and now I feel, and I'm glad, honored to be working on behalf of all the physicians in my county, all the other doctors. But so but what I want to talk about as, as I finish the aside here is in, in networking helped me in ways I never would have imagined. But so by creating these regulations and these new laws in the state, people asked me to write about it because it was unique that, that uh, someone had worked not by themselves, you know, worked with, with, because networking is never by yourself. It's, it's with others and working and creating things with others, but working to create new regulations. And I wrote about it. Fast forward a few more years, uh, probably about seven, eight years ago now, um, I got an email from the Embassy of France here in Washington, D.C., that senators from the country of France, um, they, were, they, were have, they were going to be in Washington, D.C., and they wanted to create new regulations on limiting uh, on the same thing, scope of practice, limiting non-physicians practicing medicine in, in France. And they wanted to understand how I did this and what happened how I accomplished it. I don't know how they knew about it, but I was, I'm sure it was because I had networked. I had worked with the state medical society, my county medical society, my state medical society, been to many meetings, created new regulations, wrote about it, got interviewed about it. They heard about it. So I had, um, you know, I went to the French embassy here in DC, but I had eight or nine, eight or nine centers in my office uh, one afternoon and I gave a presentation on how and what we did here in the state I live in, in Maryland, on how we created new regulations to um, lessen the scope of practice in medicine. And I, I bought them lunch. I mean, I did I a few little funny aside. I, I bought them lunch and because they came for lunch and I figured what was French. So I went to uh, uh, something called the Corner Bakery. It was a fast food place. And I, I had, they didn't eat any of the food. They didn't think it was very French. But anyway, I... Bought them lunch, they mostly didn't eat, but I gave them the presentation, they were very interested. Um, and it was an honor to have nine senators from France in my office, and then they gave me an award, which is very nice. But I never would have imagined in a million years that networking and, and advocating what I, what I thought on behalf of my patients and creating new regulations for, for my patients would have led to nine senators from France uh, coming to my office. And having me give them a present, give them a presentation, and then I think France has actually now um, used a lot of what I, what we did here in my state to, to create better regulations in France on who and who can give cos, who can do cosmetic medical procedures. So that's an aside, but it all started with networking. You never know where it's going to go. In a million years, you never know where it's going to go. Um, so I think it's important to start. As soon as, if you haven't done it earlier in life, but when you're in, in, in practice as a practicing physician, whether you're solo practice, you have to do it like I mentioned, but even if you work for someone, don't put your head in the ground, get involved and start networking. And in the first place is to start networking, networking among our own kind, our own, own kind, you know what I mean, physicians, not, just, not necessarily dermatologists, but physicians. So you never know who you'll, where it's going to go, where you're going to meet later again. And if you want to, though, move up and you're not solo practice like I am and you want to become a partner in your group or, or become involved in the, the venture capital private equity group, you have to meet the other people in the group. You have to meet again, talk to the staff, talk to the business people, go to the, the, the meetings of the group, get involved, put get and um, invite yourself to be on committees, just like I did with the County Medical Society. Find an interest and pursue it. You've got to have an interest in something, whether it be financials or what the organization does for community service or, or public awareness. I mean, there's all sorts of different avenues and committees to, to be involved in or advocacy. All these organizations still need advocates to promote them or themselves as dermatology groups, or if you're in a Kaiser, to promote Kaiser, or if, as an HMO, whatever you're in. But they have many, many committees. But you'll get to know people. Make sure you get to know people, not just as physicians, but as people. What they do, what their interests are, what they do outside of work, what their interests are. You want to become a partner. You want to... 
get to know them else elsewhere. That's all part of networking um, and, and getting to know people in your own specialty or in your own doctor world. So we do, we, you know, we can do that as a group as well. As a group of, as a group of dermatologists, I mean, cause we, we network in a way we network in the whole house of medicine as well. When we're our, our, the dermatology group, uh, you know, I'm in the American Academy of Dermatology, the American Society for Dermatologic Surgery Associations. We network within the AMA. We're part of the American Medical Association. And that networking in these organizations makes everyone aware of what, what it's like to be a dermatologist. What, what are we going through? What are the issues that face us? Things like prior authorizations. You know, that's a big uh, prior authorization step therapy. That's a big problem facing us. The price of medications. Big problem facing us and our patients. Our patients can't get, I, 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 I'll write, you know, 20 prescriptions a day, and I would say 18 of them the, the patient's insurance company won't allow. So I have to go through hoops to get that. What, what can we do to make life easier for our patients so they, they, they actually get the medicine that we think will help them most? So that we're networking as a specialty. So you're part of a network, and the same thing as when you're a part of Kaiser, you're part of the House of Medicine. I'm, I'm president of the, of the County Medical Society. But that's part of the State Medical Society. So we all go together to advocate, to network together about what our positions are and how we can better help our, our patients. So you're, you're, it's, it's, that's why I say networking is being a team player. You want to be part of the team, and it's the team that wins. You know, everything, most sports are team sports. Even swimming, which is the, the, one of the ultimate individual sports, is a team sport because you, you have a swim team. You individual, as an individual, can win, but in an event, but it doesn't mean anything for your team unless many individuals work together. And a swim team relay is like that as well. Baseball, basketball, whatever it is, you know, individual numbers don't count. You want to win as a team. So I, I'll make that analogy to networking that we, you know, networking, networking, we do it ourselves. It's the individual, but we want to look at the whole and be part of a team. Not when it comes to our, our own specialty of dermatology. I think that's very important. So once we have a job. We want to network. If it's if you're smart, like I mentioned, I was not. You want to do it before you have a job. When you're still in school, because it'll get you places that I never went. It'll get you to know people that can get you places that I, I didn't have the opportunity. But again, we're very focused on on performance, and it's it's difficult, and I realize that. But once we're in the outside world, we're just like everyone else in the world. We're in, in business, or we work for someone. We're in business, and your performance is only going to take you so far. Networking will take you the rest of the way. And networking is a team. Networking is part of the group. Part of the group, being it together. Working with others. And again, when we work with others, we want to see what their interests are. We want to know what, what they do. You never know where it's going to lead. Who would have thought, like I mentioned, centers from France we're going to come to my, my office and I, and I was going to give them a presentation. So we're on our own, we, but we are in a group. We want to work within the system that we're in. So I think that's good. Let's, we'll, we'll, we'll stop there and maybe I'll come back to it about networking in the business world. Um, but let's talk a little. We talked about networking at school to start with. But let's talk a little bit about networking outside our job. Are we just dermatologists? Are we just physicians? And we want to define our lives by that. I hope the answer to that is no. I mean, we want to be family people. We want to be parents or aunts or uncles or participate, participants in a religious community or in, a, in some sort of charity organization or multiple charity organizations or in, in organize, organized life, I guess social networks. Without, I'm not talking about social media, I'm talking about social networks. 
And, uh, and I think that's a big difference because social media, yes, you're, you're being social, but you're not being social with the world. You are not interacting directly with the world face to face. That's one thing I dislike about social media is that you're, you're not face to face with people and learning about them directly uh, because it's, it's through the, you know, through an, an online situation, which is, it's not the same. Going out and being there and meeting people and doing things and getting involved, that's what I mean when social, being social. Again, it's, it's networking is being a team player. I think it's very important once we get outside of, well, we're, we're get, we get out of our job, and I, I mentioned it's very important as a dermatologist or a doctor to network in the job world together. But I think it's just as important to find groups outside of the doctor world where we feel comfortable, we want to get to know people that we network together uh, outside of being a physician, outside the physician's world. Very important. So let's take, for example, being involved in a religious community. I mean, that's an easy thing if religion is important to you. Um, we want to be involved in, you want to get involved in your religious community. You want to get on committees of your church uh, your church does your, all sorts of charity events. Get to know your pastor, or your minister. Uh, get to know what their interests are. Other people in your religious community. Become a community. The churches sometimes have schools uh, that, that you can get involved in or other religious learning experiences for the members. Or getting, the churches will get involved in, in the community itself to help the community, help the homeless, help people who are underserved. Uh, but the, we're networking with the church, other people in our own church, and we're getting involved and we're doing it as a team and doing, and, and doing this together. Now, there are physician charities you, that, to get involved in as well. I mean, the American Academy of Dermatology has uh, Camp Discovery, for example, which is a great way to go network with other dermatologists and help kids who have disabilities and, and skin issues. That's hugely important, a great thing to do. I know many dermatologists who have gone, I have not. They come back different people. They come back and they meet other dermatologists and other family members. It changes lives. You change other people's lives. And you never know where it's going to take you in the future. You never know who you're going to meet there and what, what it's, where it's going to go and where it's going to take you in the future. So I, I think doing things outside of, outside of your, your medical life is very important. And finding that niche of where you want to go and meeting people. I'm involved in something called the Congressional Award, which is uh, the U.S. Congress's only charity. And uh, the Congressional Award gets, um, you can go learn about it, congressionalaward.org. But basically, it's something that we give to, to kids, an award given to children who earn it. Uh, but I shouldn't say children, they're between the ages of 18 and, and I think 22 or 23, or six, I'm sorry, 16 and 22 or 23 high school, college kids. They have to do so much community service, volunteer, um, physical activity uh, that, that betters themselves and, and the volunteering they do has to better the community that they live in or some community. And they do so many hours of this and they write it up and submit it to the congressional board. And the, the congressman, that of the community that the, the children live in um, awards them on Capitol Hill uh, this nice award and they get a nice little weekend up here in Washington, D.C. and they get all sorts of events where they meet famous people and they talk with people and who, who are very impressed. You should see some of the things these kids do. I'm digressing again, but it's, it's amazing to be involved in something like that and know that these kids are learning how to network themselves and volunteer and become community activists. And at the same time, they're learning how to be better people because they're growing and maturing. And that's what the award helps these children, do, these kids do, who participate. Um, I saw it in my own daughter who participated in the award and, and earned an award uh, years, a few years ago. But I'm, I'm honored to be involved in that. But you can find whatever, whatever you want and get involved in that or in, in multiple activities and network in your, in your life. I mean, how did I, how did I, how did I get involved in the congressional award? Well, I met people who were involved in it through my networking and, and I think through patients in my office who were involved. 
And I went and I participated. And after a few years of participating, they asked them to, meet on, to serve on the board. And I'm honored to be one of the only physicians on the board because they have a, the whole STEM reception that they do every year. And, and I enjoy participating in that and try and get the physician members of Capitol Hill to participate in that as well. Uh, congressmen and senators who are, who are doctors as well. And that's important because I'm networking among members of Congress also so who get to know me outside of being a dermatologist uh, and meet me. And, and so hopefully they'll remember me when I go on Capitol Hill and, and, and advocate on behalf of medicine and patients we serve. So it all goes hand in hand because you never know, like I said, you never know when you're networking one direction where it can lead you back in another and where it's going to take you. I'm going to go back to medicine for a second because I'll talk about more what uh, networking has done for me and outside of my private practice. I do a lot of clinical research trials in my practice, but the main reason I do that is through, I have been able to do that, I should say, is because of networking. How does someone do clinical trials in, in their practice? How do you do that. Of course, you have to have the setup and the staff and all the equipment needed to run a clinical trial that's through the that's FDA approved and it's registered on FDA.gov. And but you you have to be the people have to know you. I mean, it's not it's not just enough to have the staff and all the equipment. How do you get to be a reputable person that does clinical trials for pharmaceutical companies or or uh, investigator initiated trials on your own and get funding for that? You have to network and get to know people. From when I was a dermatology resident, I got to, I, I took an interest in doing clinical trials as a resident and, and met, met the other physicians who do them and met industry people who, who offer them. And once I was finished, I kept that up. When I, when I hung up my own shingle and started my private practice, I kept that up. So very much so I kept that up and, and it takes years. It doesn't happen overnight, but your car is out there. You mentioned you want to do it. You have the infrastructure. You can do a good job. You start small and then you put the word out there. But to this day, every time I'm at a meeting, you know, these clinical trials only last a few months. You need more to keep them going. You have staff to, to pay. You have the infrastructure. You have all the equipment that you're renting or own and have to pay off to do that. So to do the clinical trials, so you have to keep networking and meeting people and talking. And not every person I talk to by far will offer me a clinical trial or, or not even probably 50%, but you never know when it's going to come together or who you're going to talk with that you talk about your interest in doing clinical trials where you'll be offered one. And if you don't network and you're not out there, you're not constantly meeting people at every event, you're not going to events that at receptions, at, at, at meetings, you're not going to meet people. Take advantage of everything. In the industry, I don't think the industry, farm school industry is our, our enemy at all. I don't think the insurance industry is our enemy at all. There's good and bad with, with both, of those, both of those businesses. But as a physician, we need to work with them. We need to network with them. We want them to see our point of view. And of course, for me, I'd like to get more clinical trials and I want, to, I want to be the person to do those clinical trials, which I can then be an author on the publication and people see it. So hopefully I'll get more clinical trials because they know I'm working on in, in that field. But it all keeps going, but it all involves networking. If I'm not out there all the time, I am not able to get anything in clinical trials. And the same thing goes in business. And one other thing I forgot to mention in business, and I think is an important way to network an idea, is to work with the Chamber of Congress or your community. Become a member of the Chamber of Commerce. Go to meetings there in the Chamber of Congress. Let the other local businesses know who you are and what you do. I, uh, you know, they won't know dermatologists do skin surgery or botulinum toxin if you're not out there telling them. There's so much information and misinformation out there, people don't know what to believe anymore. So to hear it live from a person, to network, say it live, that this is what I'm about, this is what I stand for. I think that's what networking is all about as well because that's how you do business, let people know you're around, let people know what you do, and you can help them as well. And they can help you. They can certainly help you. 
So let me go back for a second before we wrap up about things we can do outside of the doctor life. I digress from that. I, I went off and I went, I went back in the business with clinical trials and stuff we can do in clinical trials, um, which is also part of networking. So get involved is the bottom line. Keep your, don't put your head in the sand and get involved. We, we mentioned religious organizations. We mentioned charities. Um, there are myriad other things you can do. You can get involved in your kid's school. Who knows how many patients, you know, again, I'm going back to work, to, to, to our work life, but how many people will come to you if you're involved in your children's school, if you're on committees of your children's school? They know you're a dermatologist. They know what you do. They know you're whatever type of doctor you are. They'll, if, if they see you, you talk with them on a personal level. You find out about them. What do they do? What are their interests? People love, people like talking about themselves. Who doesn't? I do. You know, you always enjoy talking about yourself more than hearing what others have to say. But you know what? Networking, and I think it's very important to hear what others have to say because you want to get to know them. Because one, it's great for conversation. You're getting to know them and they like that. People like when they get to talk about themselves. But two, you're learning about them. What is it that they do in their interest that you're also interested in that you can do with them, that you can do something different or, or move away and, and better your life. Becoming part of the world and, 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 and working with someone else and something else. So that's, a, I think, a very important thing to do outside of jobs. So we talked about charities, religious life, schools. What else can you think of? I want you guys to think of, of things that, other things that I'm missing. Um, that that uh, you can that you can do outside of being a doctor. And what am I missing? You know, and give me some feedback, and I'll mention how you can give me some feedback at the end of this podcast. And um, what about the chamber of commerce? Right, that I just mentioned. What 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 more would you want to know about that? What kind of? I know the chamber of commerce here will sponsor a lot of events. What kind of events would you? work on with them as far as a doctor? Would you try to set up an event for them? How would you go about networking with them? So the Chamber of Commerce usually has meetings once a month or once every other month, uh, the local Chamber of Congress, and they do do events and you can be part of a health fair. A lot, oftentimes they'll do health fairs or, or they'll go to kids' schools and you can function as, a, you know, give information at kids' schools or give a lecture at kids' schools. That is certainly great and a great way to give back to the community. But I was even talking about a more basic way of just interacting with the Chamber of Commerce, other members themselves, so they get to know your business and you get to know their businesses. So just one-to-one talking about what you do and you hear about what they do. So you can get patients. They may get business from you. you they'll refer people to you. So it's more of a um, just on a one-on-one basis, but it always helps. But it's all about the community when it comes to the Chamber of Commerce. So it's benefiting the community in whatever ways. But there, you're right. There are things that the Chamber of Commerce can do that you can get involved in where they need physicians uh, at schools or in other places. Some, sometimes it even, may even be in another uh, business. I know people have gone you know, they become members of the, cha- the local chamber of commerce and there's a big business there that wants to do a, a skin cancer screening and you can be involved. They want someone to give a lecture about the importance of sun protection and you can give that at the business. It's a great way to get um, business for yourself, but also get a great way to give back to the community and let them learn about what you do. And you'll meet other people and that's part of networking. You'll go there and you'll meet all the people who didn't go to the Chamber of Commerce meeting who works for that, that employer, that employer um, all the workers there and get to know them and you never know what, what they get to, you know, what they do and they get to know. So that, that at all goes, the more you get out there, and network, the, I think the better off you are and do, do activities. You never know who you're going to meet. I, 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 I mentioned in the beginning, I never in a million years would have thought that nine members from the center of France would come to my office in Rockville, Maryland to hear about what I've done and eat from Corner Bakery, which again, they didn't really eat. But it just, it just I never would have known. And, and that's, I, I love to hear your stories as well. Uh, if you've networked and what, what, where it went in a way you never would have imagined um, because that's where life will lead you. You just don't know until you try. And trying is, trying is, is networking. That's trying. So 
get out there. So I, I guess, you know, in summary, we, we talked about networking um, earlier on in life, which I didn't do, and how it can take you outside of just being uh, performing in, in testing and all that, and that can get you places early on in life. Uh, we talked about job networking and the different myriad ways you should network in your job and not keep your head in the sand, find interests, become involved in organized medicine in some facet, uh, chamber of commerce, you know, working with the pharmaceutical industry for clinical trials or even without clinical trials. Um, you may want a side business. Well, how are you going to start that without networking? investments or whatever you want to do you have to know people who do these things and the chamber of commerce is a good way to get started with that as well um, working with you in your own hospital system or your own hmo or your own large multi-specialty group or group to to work with others and, and and let them know what you do and what you can do for them in the community and then getting out there in the community as well through charities or religious organizations schools all those things are, I think, are, are very important as well. And that's how you get involved in the whole, the whole world. Networking, it's, it's, not, it's, a, it's a network. It goes, you don't know where it's going to go and where that network web is going to take you. And I'm not talking about social networking. I mean real networking, not through social media. I mean real networking and meeting people face-to-face -face and doing things and getting out there. That, I think, is of utmost importance. Maybe I'm an old person, which I am. But I really think that networking is very important on a personal level because that's what people, people react to and people adjust to and, and people, uh, people want to help and people want to work with you on a personal level. I mean, when you're there on a one-to-one a, a -one basis in real life, it's being a team player. So, and that's a, that's, a, that's a theme we've heard over and over in my podcast is about being a team player. Networking is being a team player and getting involved and getting to know people and becoming part of the world. That's what a network is. You want, you want a, a network, be part of the world. So I'm going to summarize that and leave it at that. And I want to thank everyone who is listening to this and, um, I'll show you a link. I'll share with you guys a link here where you can give me feedback and ask questions. I do have one more question. Yeah. In past episodes, you've talked about the importance of mentor-mentee relationships. Do they play any work in networking? I, that is a great question, and I think that mentor-mentee relationships is part of networking because whether you're a mentor or mentee, you're working together and learning about each other and that's getting out in the world and the mentee may have, so I've done mentee mentorship relationships with the American Society for Dermatologic Surgery. And they have this whole mentee mentor uh, program called the Future Leaders Network. And I've, I've done that a few times. I've worked with mentees. They are so smart. I'm, I don't feel like them. I, I feel like I'm the mentee, not the mentor. Uh, they have great ideas but they've also introduced me around to other people and their ideas and what they've done and what they performed uh, is fantastic. But to get their projects done, we have to network within the group, within outside the group to find out what other people are doing and get to get their project done. We have to do find out who does videotaping or whatever and, and, and work outside our box and work together. So yes, I consider that, that not networking because you're still, Although you're working one on one, you're not working one on one. You're and you are. It's important to learn one on one about each other. But your interests and the the other person's interests, you learn about them, and that can take you to meet other people as well. So it spreads your network as well, even if you're the mentor. So what I'm sharing on the screen, by the way, guys, is where you give feedback, and I'm glad it's been up there for a while. It gives you a chance to copy it down, uh, because that's where I want to hear your questions as you listen to this podcast feel free to write, you know, go to this link and ask questions. Tell your own story. I want to hear your story. What has networking done for you? Where have you, because I'll share it. Where is it taking you in ways, like I mentioned with the Senator France, that you never would have imagined that things happen? Never would have imagined. 
I never would have imagined another thing being on working in, with a congressional award and working with congressmen on, on uh, awarding youth who have earned and, and done things, uh, medals, and going places with that. So here's the place for feedback, www.aestheticwatercooler.com backslash dr-larry-green-feedback. That's where you should go. I'll keep it up for a few minutes. I really want to um, put that out there because we want to get feedback and I, I do want to share it. And I'll leave it up for a few more seconds. I ask if uh, uh, you can think of any other questions. No, I don't have any other questions. All right, thank you. So I'm going to take that off, but I want to thank everyone who's listening to this. And I want to thank Equa Marketing, again, the leaders in digital marketing for dermatologists for sponsoring the water cooler, who is broadening my network. And now Equa is um, honored to have them as part of my network. I'm honored to be part of their network. Uh, because uh, from here we can grow, we can grow this podcast and we'd love to have more people join the podcast and listen to the podcast and tell us how, what we think we can make this podcast better. And especially sharing your networking stories would be great. Um, Echo Marketing has the Facebook group, the business of aesthetics, which I think is another network group that I've been very happy to participate in and proud of participating in where we get together online. Although uh, after I bashed online so much social media, but it is a, a, an avenue through social media. It does not replace real networking. I'm not saying that at all, but it's a great way to get to learn from other people and, and talk online with other people about the business of aesthetics. And in that group, we don't have, just don't have physicians. We have uh, estheticians and, and, and um, nurse practitioners and, and physician's assistants, anyone who's involved in the business of aesthetics, also office managers. So it's the business of aesthetics. We can learn from everybody in that respect. So it's an online networking tool. And I, I hope I can, you know, as I use that, you use that, you can use that to, to broaden your real networking tool as well. And that's the way I look at the, the online uh, business, of, business of Aesthetics Facebook group. So thanks again for everyone. Thanks at Equa Marketing. Um, we're going to talk October 7th. That's the next podcast to mark on your calendars. October 7th, we're going to talk about I'm going to talk about becoming the doctor the patients want. That's a broad subject, and we have a lot to talk about there. And, and, and if you want in advance, feel free to use that link for feedback. And let's talk about an advanced way of, of to what I should talk about. What did you learn about becoming the doctor that you want? What should I mention that you've learned? I'll be glad to mention your name and get you on to, uh, on October 7th if you want to participate. If you can't make it, I'll, I'll just share your story for you. Be glad to do that. So that said, I'm going to close tonight and thank you for participating and um, look forward to hearing from you. Mm -hmm.